ever walked into a room during the closing moments of a movie? Your wife is working on her second box of tissue as she watches a couple kissing on the top of the Empire State Building. You say, that's great, can I watch the game now? You see, that kiss means so much more to her because she's watched the entire movie. She sat through the pinings and the near misses of the lonely lovers. Of course, a lot of us guys could watch the entire chick flick and still not get it, but you understand my point. The beginning of a story is necessary to appreciate its end. If you don't see the beginning or the middle parts, you can't begin to appreciate the climax. The same is true of the Bible. The Bible story is simply creation, fall, and redemption. Now, creation is not the whole story, not by a long shot. It's just the first two chapters of the Bible. But if we have a too low view of creation, if we get the beginning of the story wrong, if we confuse creation and the fall, we'll never understand redemption. Get creation wrong, and you'll never get redemption right. Many Christians unknowingly take their cues about creation from Plato. Plato was an ancient philosopher who basically said, heaven is good, the earth is bad, my soul is good, my body is bad. We are essentially souls who are now trapped in this physical material universe and we're waiting to be rescued, to be taken away back to heaven where our souls can twinkle and shine forever. Just to show how this Platonic influence has infiltrated the church, I've taken some snippets of my favorite hymns and choruses and put them together in a sort of Platonic medley. It goes something like this. This world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. I'll fly away, O oh glory, I'll fly away. Like a bird from prison bars has flown, I'll fly away. Somewhere in outer space, God has prepared a place for those who love him and obey. When we all get to heaven, this robe of flesh I'll drop and rise and seize the everlasting prize. I once was an outcast stranger on earth, a sinner by choice and an alien by birth. So thank you, O oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till the work on earth is done. Tell me, when exactly will God's work be done on planet Earth? The Bible says the end is a new creation. It's a new earth. God will come and dwell here forever. He'll never be finished with this planet. In fact, Genesis 2 verse 7 says, we are Adam. Adam comes from the Adama. The name Adam means red dirt. We're earthlings for heaven's sake. When you have a child, the most biblically accurate, theologically correct name you could ever give your son is clay or dusty. If you have a girl, try sandy. You may be wondering, what's the big deal? Can't a person be saved without the right view of creation? Yes, of course. Many people have been saved without understanding the goodness of God's world. But a negative view of creation will destroy the Christian faith. Here's why. Our faith depends on an incarnation. God became fully human, meaning he took a, a soul and a human body. If the physical world is evil, as many Platonic people believe, then the incarnation would be impossible. This is why in John chapter 1, verse 14, the Apostle John said to a Platonic Gnostic thinker named Serinthus, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. The very first Christmas is really about God's humility. He condescended to our, our level. But it's also an affirmation of creation. Christmas is God's yes on this physical world. The physical world must be good because God himself, now in the person of his son, has a body just like yours. Besides the incarnation, we also need a good physical world to make sense of the resurrection. The Corinthian church were overly spiritual 
they bought Plato's idea that heaven was good and the earth was bad. My soul is good. My body is bad. And so they didn't believe in a physical resurrection. And so Paul says to them in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 17, if there is no resurrection, then even Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, you're still in your sins. Congratulations, Corinthians. You're so spiritual, you're not even Christian. You can be more spiritual than God. You see, from start to finish, the whole story of the Bible affirms the goodness of creation. It starts, the story begins in a sensual garden of delight. It turns on the embodiment of our God who physically died and physically rose again. We remember his sacrifice in the physical waters of baptism, in the physical bread, in the physical cup, and we believe that he will physically come back again and physically raise us from the dead. And we will live forever on this physical new earth where we'll eat from the physical tree of life and drink from the physical river of life. The whole story of the Bible from start to finish is physical. In the best sense of the word, materialistic. You see, redemption is more than creation but it's not less than creation. Start on the wrong foot, confuse creation and fall, think there's something evil, something inferior, something wrong about creation, and you'll never get the gospel right. Do you love Jesus? Then go ahead. Enjoy this good world that he made for you. Mm -hmm.